physical examination of the breast is demonstrated in this teaching video. We have the following learning objectives. We shall learn the history taking of a patient suffering from breast complaints followed by method for performing physical examination of the breast. While taking history for a patient suffering from breast complaints, note down the following points. Ask if she noticed any lump in the breast. If yes, then its duration and whether it grew rapidly or slowly. Note down whether the lump is painful or painless. If she noted any discharge from the nipple, then note down the color and the duration of the nipple discharge. And ask if the nipple discharge comes spontaneously, that is on its own or only on pressure. Please also ask if the nipple discharge comes from a single milk duct or from multiple milk ducts. Use of any oral contraceptive pills or hormone replacement therapy should be noted. Associated medical history in the form of diabetes, heart disease, blood pressure and drugs used for these diseases should also be recorded. History of any previous breast disease and any surgery performed on the breast should also be recorded. Detailed menstrual history with age at menarche and if she has attained menopause should also be recorded. The number of children born is recorded followed by the detailed history of any cancer in the breast or in the ovaries or any other cancer should be recorded both from the mother side as well as from father side. Breast examination is carried out in two steps. The inspection or seeing the breast and palpation or feeling the breast. Note that inspection or seeing is best done in sitting position and palpation is best done in flat or supine position. You can remember it like this. Seeing in sitting S for S and feeling in flat F for F. During inspection, we shall examine her first in sitting position with her hands on the side of the hip bone. Note down any asymmetry between the shape, size, any skin change such as any color change, ulceration, prominent veins or vessels, any puckering, dimpling or any bulge on the breast. Color of the nipple and areola should be recorded. The size and the position of the nipple areola complex should be recorded. The direction of the nipple on the two sides should also be recorded. Please note down any indrawing of the nipple on either one side or both sides. We shall demonstrate the technique of inspection and palpation of the memory gland on a lady aged 74 who came to the clinic with history of a painless lump in her left breast along with blood stained nipple discharge coming from the left nipple. Both these symptoms were noted two months ago. We begin the inspection with requesting the lady to keep her hands on the waist we observe that there is no gross asymmetry between the two memory glands. The nipple and areola are located at the same level on the two sides. Now we request the lady to raise her arms above the head. We observe a bulge in the inner side of the left breast. There is slight retraction of the left nipple on arm elevation. The palpation is done in supine position requesting the lady to lie on a hard bed. We place a pillow under her shoulder and request her to raise her arms above the head. This allows a stretching of the breast which becomes flat and allows detection of even a small lump. We follow dial of a clock method for breast palpation. 12 o'clock being at the mid-clavicular point above, 3 o'clock on the midline, 6 o'clock being at the inframammary crease or below the breast and 9 o'clock being at the mid-axillary line. The palpation is done with the pad of three fingers placed together. We begin the palpation at 12 o'clock position. The breast is palpated with pad of three fingers with increasing pressure. 
Initially, light pressure is applied and fingers are gently rolled to feel the skin and subcutaneous tissue. A circle of about 3 cm diameter, second circle being placed half overlapping the first circle. We gradually progress towards the nipple. We next palpate the one o'clock of the breast, starting from the edge of the breast, progressing towards the nipple in the similar manner using pad of three fingers. Note that while palpating at one point, pull the breast tissue towards diagonally opposite side. For example, while you are palpating three o'clock, with the other hand, pull the breast towards nine o'clock. This allows the breast tissue to become steady and if any lump is present, it can be better felt. On the right side, palpate the inner half of the breast that is from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the supine position. For palpation of the outer half of the right breast that is from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock, we request the lady to roll on the opposite side. This allows the breast tissue to fall by gravity towards the midline. In this position, start from 7 o'clock while palpating at 9 o'clock, pull the breast with the other hand towards 3 o'clock. Starting at the inframemory crease, progress towards the nipple. Subsequently, palpate 8, 9, 10 in this semi-lateral position. Now we shall demonstrate the palpation of major milk ducts. We roll the milk ducts between thumb and index finger first at 3 and 9 o'clock position and then repeat this procedure at 12 and 6 o'clock position. Now we shall demonstrate examination of the left breast which had a lump. In sitting position we noted a bulge in the inner half of the left breast along with slight left nipple retraction. Palpation of the outer half of the breast is done with the lady lying rolled on the opposite side starting from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock using pad of three fingers. Now request her to become flat lying supine and start palpating from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock. We find a hard lump located in the upper inner quadrant. We are marking the margins of this lump with a skin marking pen. Examine the size, shape, surface and margins along with consistency of this lump. We are performing the examination of the major milk ducts on the left side. We note down the blood discharge coming from the left nipple. Now we are checking the fixity of the lump to underlying muscle. For this, move the lump. If lump is freely mobile, that means it is free from the underlying muscle. Now we begin palpating the axillary lymph nodes or lymph glands present in the armpit. There are 15 to 20 lymph nodes located in the armpit or axilla. Sometimes they can be enlarged without any lump in the breast. Therefore, it is very important for you to examine the axillary lymph nodes very carefully. First, we begin by palpating pectoral group of nodes. The examiner places her fingers in the anterior part of the axilla behind the pectoral muscle and thumb is placed anterior to this muscle. While doing this, Keep patient's forearm resting on your forearm so that the pectoral muscle is relaxed. Next, we palpate the central group of nodes by rolling her fingers against the ribs on the medial wall of axilla. Examiner is palpating the lateral group of nodes by moving her fingers against the humerus. The apical group of nodes are being palpated by raising her hand above the head, making a cone of fingers placed between the anterior and posterior axillary folds. Now the examiner stands behind the lady and starts 
palpating the neck nodes or the supra clavicular nodes and later on move your fingers below the clavicle to feel the infra clavicular group of nodes lying below the clavicle palpate the glands located in the posterior part of the axilla by placing your fingers in front of the posterior axillary fold roll the tissue between your thumb and fingers for this examination the hands of the lady should be resting on her knees to relax the muscles of the posterior axillary fold if you find any abnormality on inspection or palpation please report the findings to the medical officer in your clinic for further investigation thank you